Welcome to Discourse, I am Susil Pandey. Nepal has also marked the International Women Day on Sunday, organizing various programs. Today, I am going to talk about the real problems of Nepali women and their solutions in comparison with the USA. My guest is Professor Dr. Catherine S. Mars. She is a professor at Cornell University of the USA. Welcome to Discuss. Thank you very much, Sushilpa. It's my pleasure. You are a feminist, an activist in the USA, and you have also researched in Nepal and you have visited Nepal many times. You know the real condition of Nepali women. Let me know what is the real condition of Nepali women in this context. Oh, this, my experience in Nepal is um, actually relatively limited. I've worked mostly with Sherpa and with recently especially with Kamang women. And of course, Nepal, the situation of women is very, very diverse. From the Michi to the Mahakali, yeah. uh, from east to west, north to south, the situation of women is very, very different. Um, when I first began working in the field of feminist studies, we asked ourselves, why is the status of women the way it is? And I now realize that the question is very poorly framed. Yeah. The question should not be about the status of woman because women are, are in so many different situations. Mm -hmm. The situation of Tamang women, the situation of Dalit women, the situation of urban women, the situation of educated women, mm -hmm. the situation of uneducated women, the situation of daughters as opposed to daughters-in-law, mothers as opposed mm -hmm. to, all of these things um, become very important in understanding mm -hmm. um, what, what difficulties do um, women in mm -hmm. Nepal face. And I think that the most important thing is to understand all of those differences. Um, multidimensional. Multidimensional. Now, of course, it is, the, it is true that all of those women are still subject to national law. Yeah. And it is the case that national law in Nepal for many, many years mm -hmm. um, discriminated against women mm -hmm. in multiple, multiple okay. ways. You did your PhD dissertation in Tamang women, Nepali Tamang women. Yeah. I did my PhD dissertation. I was looking to try to see how Tamang women and Sherpa women. When, uh, when did you do that? I did it from 1975 to 1977. It means 70s. In the mid 70s. Mid -70s. In 70s. Now, what did you find the real condition of women at that time, Punjab era, and now you are visiting Nepal and yeah. you also having some research and visiting Nepali women? What is the difference between the women of that time and the women of this, this, this period? There are many, many differences. In that period, um, there were very few schools in rural areas. Yeah. Um, at the time when I was doing my first period of research in the Tamang community um, with my husband, David Holmberg, yeah. and with the assistance of Suryaman Tamang, there were no girls. There was a brand new primary school, but mm -hmm. there were no girls in the primary school. And just the other day, I met uh, with a, a young Dalit man in the community, and he remembered coming to our house and trading eggs for copybooks and pencils. Mm -hmm. um, so at that point was the first time that girls went to school. So education was a brand new opportunity for women. Now from that same village, there's a young woman, uh, Ikimaya Tamang, who has done her master's in sociology, anthropology here mm -hmm. at TU. So education is a huge difference. Health, maternal health and child health. Um, in th at the time when we were doing our first research in, this, in the Tamang community on the border of Raso and Nuakot, mm -hmm. uh, at that time, 46% of the children died before they reached the age of five. Mm -hmm. Women had, on average, seven children. A woman's life choices are very different if you have seven children mm -hmm. um, compared to having uh, two, right, mm -hmm. or one or two or three. So um, from the point of view of health, from the point of view of, uh, of education, mm -hmm. it, the differences are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, also, of course, this is the same period of time when ethnic pride, um, when we were there at first, you know, people, if, if, you, if you came into Kathmandu, people referred to Sherpa and Tamang women as bote. Yeah. And bote is not a gentle word. That is a derogatory <laughs> term. It's a very derogatory term. Them. Yes, mm -hmm. it was indeed. And so, um, in terms of self-pride, uh, in terms of education, in terms of health, yeah. there are many differences. And uh, even there are so many women who are subordinated due to their uh, caste also. Mm -hmm. 
yes. region also, yes. rural areas and urban areas also. Mm -hmm. Relative to the situation of women in some other uh, cultural contexts in Nepal, uh, the reason I chose to work among Sherpa and Tamang women was because uh, they were reported to have relatively more gender equality. And indeed, inside I think... Inside the home? Inside the home, outside the home. Um, they're, they're in many ways, you know, one of the things that I have many, many good friends who are feminists here in Nepal. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I um, suggest to them and that I suggest to everyone here in Nepal is that you don't need to look to the West for models mm -hmm. of how to achieve equality. Yeah. Um, you need to look also within the country. Mm -hmm. There are many strong But Professor Catherine, in Nepal there is a trend that we have to follow Western countries so far as feminist, mm -hmm. feminist or female rights mm -hmm. are concerned. And in some regard, I mean, I think it should be an exchange, okay? Yeah. You, can look, you can look to America to say, will society fall apart if our daughters have equal inheritance rights? Yeah. And I can, I can tell you, it mm. won't. <laughs> but <laughs> in other ways, mm. there are other ways in which I think we can look to Nepal. Mm. Um, and I look to Nepal yeah. or for other sources okay. of inspiration. I have heard that you, have, you, you are a feminist activist, a acti female right activist in the USA. Mm -hmm. And uh, to compare between Nepal and e USA, what can we fi find uh, between the real condition of Nepali women and women living in the USA? Well, once again, uh, I can't make a generalization about all the women in the U.S., nor can I make a generalization about all the women in Nepal. Yeah. If, I, if I'm going to compare mm -hmm. all of us, I have to look at the law, because the law applies to all of us in the United States, and the law applies to all, of, all, of, all women in Nepal. And there are differences in law. Equality is not guaranteed. Gender equality is not currently guaranteed or secure. Um, and it absolutely needs to be written into the new constitution. Yeah. But beyond that, beyond the law, the question of family and society and religion and caste and ethnicity and wealth, these are questions that, that really determine the opportunity. I'm a very fortunate person in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, I have three younger brothers. Mm -hmm. I'm the oldest sister. Mm -hmm. I had many opportunities in my family. Mm -hmm. My family is educated. My father is also a professor. Mm -hmm. um, there was no question I was going to be educated. Right? Yeah. So I have, I have opportunities that many women in the United States do not have. Um, black and African-American women, Hispanic yeah. women, mm -hmm. recently yeah. migrated women, uh, women who are there without legal papers, mm -hmm. women who, who don't have the same access yeah. to um, family planning. Uh, so women are different, so do their problems. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. The only thing that we all share is that we all live under the same legal and political system. But um, in Nepal, it is regarded that America is far major than Nepal so far as women rights are concerned. But let me know one thing. Why mm -hmm. America does not have a single female president <laughs> so far to the date? Well, again, uh, South Asia is unique uh, because in some regards, the situation for girl children uh, in South Asia is quite dire. Yeah. The, the problem, as Amartya Sen um, indicated, of the missing girls in India, uh, the problems of rape, of acid attacks, mm -hmm. of... Um, uh, high suicide or uh, mm. murder rate, uh, murder rates. Mm. Very s many, many indications um, s suggest that the situation in South Asia for girl children is dire. On the other hand, every country in South Asia, um, <laughs> except Nepal and the Maldives, I believe, mm. have had a female head uh, of the state. Head of state. For example, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Bangladesh yeah. uh, uh, Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Okay. Yeah. So just having a head of state who's a woman isn't a guarantee of equality um, okay. for women. In those cases, I suspect um, it was the, the family position, the, the yeah. wealth position, the educated position, the urban. Political and connection of the family. Also. That's all right. Exactly. Yeah. And so those we might ask ourselves, were those heads of state uh, in their position because they were women or in spite of being mm -hmm. women? So the United States, um, I certainly look forward to a time mm -hmm. when women are as um, well represented in politics. Yeah. But the United Nepal is doing better than the United States in politics. In political representation of women, we have mm -hmm. fewer 
um, women actively. But Professor Kadrin, I am very curious that why it is always a male that uh, uh, he he does the main uh, very important thing for the first time. For example, it was a male who discovered America. <laughs> it was a male who stayed the moon at the first time. Yeah, it was a male who discovered that the Earth was round. Mm -hmm. Is round. Mm -hmm. Why only male did that, <laughs> not women? Why? What is the real cause of that? Well, because European civilization is very patriarchal. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, I think that, you know, when I first began doing researches uh, in feminist studies, the question we were asking is your question. Why is it that everywhere women are subordinated to men? And of course this comes um, directly from the uh, French author Simone de Beauvoir, who yeah. wrote a very important book, The Second Sex. Mm -hmm. So the question that we all started with in the West. From the Mary Ollistoncraft. From the very, yes, all, uh, all, of, our, all of our thinkers, mm -hmm. they, all, they all ask themselves the question, why is it that women are secondary do, to do men? Do you find Einstein? I think it's the wrong question. <laughs> why? I think it's the wrong question. Um, I think we needed to ask, are women the second sex everywhere in the world? In Europe, Yes, European history um, since the early modern period indicates that legal structures, family structures, um, economic relations, inheritance laws, all of those things discriminated very heavily against girl children. Um, I think that we in the West asking questions about the position of women, all their different positions, mm -hmm. uh, relative to men around the world, were blinded yeah. by, the, by the male bias in our own situation. My question is why they cannot fight back the male dominated society, patriarchy? I think, um, well, there, there are lots of reasons, of course. I mean, if you don't have any resources of your own, if you are completely dependent upon men to for your safety, mm -hmm. for the well-being of your children, if you are at risk physically when you go out in mm -hmm. public, um, if you are fed less from the time you're small, if you are constantly told that you are not capable, mm. uh, um, it's hard. It's hard to reach inside and find the strength. Can I say those those women who have access to politics, they cannot. Uh, uh, they don't speak for the women who are subordinated still or dominated in the society. Uh, I think that's them? an important question. I think that's a very important question. I think that those of us who are privileged and in Nepal, that that tends to be high caste, yeah. urban. Hindu, educated, educated women, um, understanding the challenges that confront low caste or non caste, uneducated rural women, it you you have to have that experience to understand it. That being said, some of the strongest women I know are women who come out of backgrounds that you say I don't I I would have been crushed by that background. Here I am, a privileged person, and I'm I'm still you know afraid to go out at night. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I know women who have backgrounds where they were literally thrown on their own resources from the time they were 11 years old. They confronted such um, adverse conditions and they are extraordinarily strong. Um, you know, it's, it's not just a question for women. The question that we need to ask in the United States, in Europe, in South Asia, and in Nepal is if we, if we cripple half of our population Mm -hmm. How can our country prosper? How can it develop the whole nation? Yeah? That's right. That's right. You're you're cutting. you you know if you, you drive a motorcycle with one hand, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Cook a meal with one hand. Fight mm -hmm. a war with one hand. Um, Nepal is tying tying one hand behind its back. If 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 girl children do not have the opportunity to be fully um, human participants in the mm -hmm. society. Now, now you, you know that Nepal is trying to promulgate new constitutions. I mean, yes. You also know the discourse of women rights in the new constitution. Can you say? Uh, I'm a great yeah. admirer of the women activists who are working for the constitution. I think the work particularly of um, Sapana yeah. is extraordinary in mm. documenting what the... My, the my question is, is the discourse of human rights in Nepal discussing in the Constitu Constituent Assembly oriented to right direction? Well, um, as it, I don't think we know exactly what the right direction is. I think we have to be creative. To liberate women, to yeah, give them their rights. Yeah, we have to be creative. We have to be creative. We have to recognize that women's opportunities come from many, many directions. They come from family support, above all. They come from nutritional support. Yeah. They come from health. They come from economic opportunity. 
Um, Even Nepali women don't have access to their property right, uh, that's parental right. property right. Yes. And they don't give their daughters or sons citizenship certificate on their own name. That's right. Yeah. Even Th Those are obvious changes. Yeah. Those are obvious things. Those are things that the law can do. Um, and those are things that I think, uh, I hope very, very sincerely that people will recognize that those are obstacles. If a, if a, if a woman doesn't have the economic resources equal to her brothers, of course she's going to have to um, have to uh, suffer from that. You know, when I talk with people about women development, um, it seems to me that there are two major models that are working in the world. One I call a dependency model. Yeah. One model says we need to keep our women as diamonds, as flowers, as, and uh, we need to protect them, we need mm -hmm. to shelter them. Mm -hmm. uh, that model um, it, it, it's better than beating them or, <laughs> or not, but it keeps women in a dependent role. And again, mm -hmm. it's like, like putting one hand behind your back, yeah. trying to do work. Mm -hmm. The other model says we need both our sons and our daughters. Mm -hmm. um, we need both of them to be uh, as capable of, uh, as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, ability and um, disability are, they spare no one mm -hmm. and they're not, they're not you know, they, w there's no telling. You could have a daughter who was very able and a son who was not very able. Yeah. If you invest only in the son and not the daughter, you've lost, you've lost um, a great deal of capability for yourself, mm -hmm. for, your, for your family, for your country. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, um, I think whatever the law can do, I think that's very important. And Nepal has been very creative. Um, I, I at was... Um, I learned so much from Nepal uh, trying to understand the electoral system that you put in place. Mm. It's much more... Proportional representative system? Pro yes, yes, and, and the, mixed, the, the mixed system, the, and especially proportional mixed representative system. Mixed electoral system. Uh, is, is direct and proportional representation. That's right, that's right. The U.S. has only direct representation. Mm -hmm. um, that means that, uh, you know, the chances for um, uh, underrepresented populations, mm -hmm. including women, are, they're difficult. They require, they will only follow social mm -hmm. change. All right? um, here, I think the, the decision to create well, the mixed system, has, has the government has, is leading the way in some yes. ways. But Dr. Kathy, you know, that kind of electoral system, mm -hmm. as you said, proportional representation system only guarantee the representation of women in the uh, political position, maybe in the constant assembly or less less parliament but well that's important too important, <laughs> it's important women that's where the there, laws are made women are represented there and they don't speak for other women's then things, things but are seen. that's right that's right and if all the women are high caste urban educated women mm -hmm. um, then it will it will take longer for them to realize what the situation of their sisters in other contexts are. But if you look at the countries in the world where um, socially, educationally, economically, and politically, mm -hmm. men and women are on relatively more equal footing, um, the Scandinavian countries all have proportional uh, mm -hmm. electoral systems. Um, it, it's, um, it, so, but, but, you know, I think we haven't looked seriously enough yeah. at the situation of women in non-Western countries. Yeah. Um, and I think that's that's really my my um, my plea mm -hmm. is uh, as a Western woman, I know that we have many very very serious problems still to solve. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I also know some things like property rights yeah. are better. Um, I'm looking to Nepal um, to help lead the way, not only in terms of um, political rights for women, but in other ways. Nepal is a very creative, very energetic, very diverse mm -hmm. place. Uh, there are many, many, many mm -hmm. uh, interesting, very interesting possibilities mm -hmm. um, within the country. You are a uh, female rights activist, women rights activist in the USA. Eh? My uh, activism is mostly in education. It, one is Kristen? Yes. Not only. Um, in the US, of course, um, what we do politically, we do as private individuals mm -hmm. and what we do professionally is as a public individual. So do you still think that in the USA, being a professor, you are subordinated in the society to the men? I'm a person who has a great deal of opportunities. I personally um, do I'm not... I'm not talking about 
as so as Professor Kathleen, yes. with all the women of the USA. That's right. Um, I have to remind myself all the time that there are women who haven't had my opportunities because mm -hmm. I've had many, many opportunities um, from my from the foundation that my family gave me mm -hmm. um, to my health. Uh, to the opportunities in education. Mm -hmm. I've had many, many opportunities. I couldn't, I can't, you know, I can't stand up and say, mm -hmm. here's how heavily I've been discriminated. I certainly, there certainly are examples, mm -hmm. um, uh, but my situation is very privileged. Uh, you have mentioned about the Nepali women rights activist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you want to say to them? <laughs> Keep up the good work. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think they, they, um, I think they need to embrace uh, women from more diverse backgrounds mm -hmm. and um, need to try to continue, same as I need to, continue uh, to understand the situation of women who are less privileged than they are. Um, but I think they have been doing um, an extraordinary job. Yeah. We are at the end of the program, Professor Catherine. Do you want to say something to Nepali women? Oh, I want to congratulate Nepali women on the occasion of the International uh, Women's, Women's Day. Day. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm always uh, delighted to be in Nepal on International Women's Day. In the United States, it is not celebrated. Mm -hmm. uh, in Nepal, it is celebrated. I also want to continue to urge them to make every day mm -hmm. a Women's Day, and oh, not just to make it something that we think about one day of the year, but also something that we carry around in every enterprise that we do, and to congratulate them and to wish that their work um, is fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Gathering. Thank you very much indeed for giving us time. Thank you very much, Sushil Bhai. It was very much my pleasure. Okay. Today I've talked with Professor Dr. Kathleen Watts. Thanks for watching. Stay with us. Goodbye and Namaste.